venerable sisters and dear parishioners, I spoke at some length the last Sunday about the Trinity, how the operations of the Holy Trinity are, um, the generation, the procession, the relationship. So I would like to today to continue speaking about an aspect of the Holy Ghost, and that would be the fruits of the Holy Ghost. This is something that I don't think has uh, is reflected upon enough, and so this is obviously focusing more on the third person of the Trinity instead of the all three persons whom we are honoring today on this summation of all feasts. But uh, in a sense, of course, they pertain to the Father and Son as well. Last Sunday, in explaining the gifts and the virtues, I made use of an analogy, which came from a famous theologian 100 years ago in the Catholic Church. And we talked about the virtues being the motor in our boat, that we are obliged, it is our duty to keep this engine going. In this boat, if we don't, that boat will not reach its destination. Boats have a destination. They are not just built, just sit in the harbor and be safe and go nowhere. They're supposed to go places. So in that analogy that we want to get to heaven, we have to get across the sea of life. We're in the boat of our lives, so to speak, the boat of our life. We need to keep this engine running. And, of course, we don't have to do it all by ourselves. We can't do it all by ourselves. Fortunately, we also have our sails, the seven sails in our boat, the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. And it is our duty to keep those sails in good condition, keep them, even enlarge them, so that they can catch the wind better, which is, by analogy, the Holy Ghost, carrying us across the sea of life. And we've all experienced those times in our lives where God was picking us up and, and carrying us and giving us uh, through those gifts a special help, which we needed. But the wind doesn't always blow. And therefore, we go back to our little engine. It has to be kept going, the, the virtues in our daily lives. Well, today, I would like to use another analogy. And when we talk about the fruits of the Holy Ghost, we are talking about, well, our analogy is fruits. Think of apples or oranges or bananas. Uh, many kinds of fruit there are. And these are used in a metaphorical way by St. Paul himself. And we're going to be looking at chapter 5 of Galatians, in which St. Paul lists the fruits of the Holy Ghost. Now, if I may remind you that in the time of St. Paul, sugar wasn't known in the Mideast or the or, or European areas. That was, this was something that was brought, I believe, by the Crusaders uh, from the Far East that had been developed in India, I believe. Now, of course, honey had been around for a long time. That was definitely a sweetener. We find many references to honey and honeycomb in Holy Scripture. But the people didn't have sugar. So often, fruit was the dessert, so to speak. It was, fruit is sweet. It has fructose in it. So in the absence of sugar, you know, honey and fruit were used as, the, as, as a, I guess, a dessert food. So there's that idea of sweetness, of pleasure, when one is partaking of fruit. Now, in chapter 5 of Galatians, 
St. Paul, let's look, we can look at the second half of it. St. Paul, before he lists the fruits of the Holy Ghost, he lists the works of of the flesh. And we hear this in another uh, Sunday epistle. He says, The works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanness, immodesty, luxury, idolatry, witchcrafts, enmities, contentions, emulations, wraths, quarrels, dissensions, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And then St. Paul makes this key point about these works of the flesh. He says, if you do these, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We, our world, our relativistic, liberal world, which thinks that you can do these things and get to heaven, find a direct contradiction here of St. Paul says, watch out for these things. These are serious offenses. They will keep you out of heaven. So it's an examination of conscience. Are these sins present in our lives? If they are. We have to eliminate them. Otherwise, as St. Paul says, we have no inheritance in He says, they who do such things shall not obtain the kingdom of God. So St. Paul has to talk about the ugly, about the unfortunate. So he has to list those. And then he makes this transition into the fruits. And But the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, patience, benignity, goodness, longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, chastity. He says, against such, the, such there is no law. Now, what St. Paul is telling us here is that if we do, if we l- live that life of virtue, you know, keep that engine going in our boat, and benefit from the wind of the Holy Ghost, the sails that are in our boat, and we keep persevering in this, he says, we are going to see the fruits in our daily lives. Now, how are the fruits different from the gifts and the virtues? Well, the, the virtues and the gifts are of a permanent character. They are, they're, they're always there. They're supposed to always be working. So these are more like the causation aspect of it all. But the fruits are the effect. And theologians and interpreters of Scripture tell us that the fruits are these good deeds that are done so repeatedly in our lives that we actually acquire a pleasure in doing them. But how do you take pleasure in doing something that's difficult? Well, it happens that if you get into good habits, that you can reach a point where you look forward to it. You, you inherently enjoy, you know, or often anyway, enjoy some pleasure in it. An example that comes to mind, let's say somebody wants to get on to you know, an exercise program. You know, they, they haven't been exercising. They, they you know, said, I've got to go, you know, work out. I've got to make use of that equipment. And at first it's hard. But when they get into that, they get into a rhythm, a routine, where they actually start looking forward to that exercise. You know, the running, the, you know, the, the physical exertion. There's, a, there's even a certain kind of pleasure that comes with it later on. So it's the same way in the spiritual life. If we are persevering in virtue and in using, the, the, the benefiting from the Holy Ghost by cultivating his gifts, we are going to do these good deeds, yes, which are difficult, but we actually have a spiritual pleasure involved. And that's why they're called fruits, because fruit is sweet. And St. Paul says, in your life, you should have this spiritual sweetness, because it just happens if you persevere in it long enough. So, 
charity, the first fruit, where you not only do good deeds, but you enjoy helping others. You enjoy doing those. You, there's that spiritual pleasure that comes from, from lending assistance spiritually or, or temporally to other people. Joy, well, there it is, the, the joy itself. You know, there's no such thing as a sad saint. Yes, we have sorrow in this life, and that is one of the paradoxes of our faith, but St. Paul himself says, as sorrowing, yet always rejoicing. A continual moroseness of some kind is a lack of the fruit of the Holy Ghost. There should be, a, a, at a deep level, a, a joy we have, and that leads right to the third fruit of peace. If you're in turmoil or going through a storm, conflicts going on inside of you, you're missing out on the peace that is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. Patience. And that is actually a synonym for longanimity. This is why in some ancient copies of the scripture, there are only nine fruits of the Holy Ghost, and in other copies, there's 12. And this is a legitimate area of study for Bible scholars to try to figure out, was it nine only, or is it 12? But it's possible that three of these are being used in a synonymous way. For example, patience and longanimity, synonyms. Um, uh, goodness and benignity are synonyms. And finally, modesty and continency are synonyms. So it's possible. So either way, they can be, uh, you can read it as nine fruits or as 12 fruits. So patience and longanimity. How do you be happy when you feel frustrated? Or how do you, how do, you do acts of patience when it's the frustrations of life that keep coming at you? Well, we look at the lives of the saints, and even in our own lives, I think to a lesser extent, we can have, we can have a spiritual pleasure in saying, I have an opportunity to bear with something. I've seen it. I've seen people smile through their crosses. That's a fruit of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Longanimity is more the idea of patience in the long term. Benignity and goodness. You know, when you have, when you have the goodness within you, it, it just overflows. It, it's not just to have for yourself. And I guess in this way, it's allied to charity. But are you, are you one of those people that has this overflowing of goodness? Somebody who's trying to help pick others up spiritually through good example. Or somebody that can be counted on for help. You have the fruit of goodness and benignity. Mildness. Didn't Jesus tell us, learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart? Meekness or mildness. Being able to, to find a spiritual pleasure in restraining that anger which wants to lash out. And we say, no. We're going to have meekness. Another fruit of the Holy Ghost. Faith. This is also understood as not only a, the readiness to believe in God and in, and in the revelations of God, the revelations of our Blessed Mother, such as at Fatima and Lourdes, but also that idea of, of loyalty and trustworthiness. So of faith or fidelity a fruit of the Holy Ghost, and a spiritual pleasure to be found in doing that. And then modesty and continency. These two fruits involve restraint. Modesty, restraining one's speech, 
restraining one's looks, not looking at occasions of sin, and dressing modestly. When one is living the the virtues and the gifts, one does not find modesty to be a burden. If somebody finds it to be a burden, this person is really lacking in that fruit. It's missing from the tree, or it's in a small and shriveled state. St. Paul says, you will have a spiritual joy in the appropriate restraint of oneself, in speech, in in dress, in behavior, not a raucous, you know, uh, undisciplined sort of acting, but restraint, continency holding in. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. If we hear exhortations about modesty, what's our reaction to that? Oh, here goes Father again. Is that the fruit of the Holy Ghost? No. It needs to be talked about. It's a a protection for purity and chastity. Take away the fence, you'll destroy the field. You'll destroy the garden. And modesty is the fence that protects. We have to talk about it because purity and chastity is such a critical virtue and so much attacked. And then finally, well, the last fruit, uh, chastity. So St. Paul is saying, again, we should see these fruits in our daily lives. Today is Father's Day, and I was just thinking how these fruits in the Father are so powerful in helping his family. And each one of us has different roles, different vocation to, to fulfill. And when the Father is... And this is what we pray for, for the fruits of the Holy Ghost to become stronger in your lives. Because when the Father does it in that leadership role, it's powerful. It's what helps lead his family to God, lead his family to heaven. The charity of the Father, the willingness to help others. I remember my own father, God rest his soul, what a... You could certainly see the charity in, 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 in him, the goodness, his willingness to help others, his willingness to reach out. And one of the things that I, appreci- I didn't quite understand at the time, but when I was a boy, I remember him always going out of his way to greet new people to the parish and get to know them, make them feel welcome. And that was a fruit of the Holy Ghost, and it's something that I've really pr- tried to appreciate. And one of my, believe it, one of the things I really enjoy doing is getting parishioners to meet one another. <laughs> so often, you know, parishioners avoid one another or, or, or I, I just, to just choose not to mingle. You know, we need more of the fruit of the Holy Ghost here. You know, this is, what, this is what draws people to the faith. This fruit of the Holy Ghost is always listed as the first one, the charity. The wanting to be around one another, interact. And yes, I love to introduce parishioners that maybe don't, want to know, don't know one another or are new. And then once they start talking, I can leave. I, they're, they're already engaged. They're, I can go on to... Trying to find somebody else to introduce. So when the Father does it, it's, it's powerful. It's his faithful, his uh, patience when Dad is bearing up under you know, trials and, and, and contradictions and dealing with his frustrations. He's teaching his family through that fruit of the Holy Ghost what, he, what needs to be done, how to deal with it. And, and of course, his own joy and peace in, in having the faith. His mildness, his fidelity, his, 
is being that good provider, but not just of material things, but of spiritual things to his family. And yes, even dad has to talk about the importance of modesty. Dad has to have that fruit of the Holy Ghost, of restraint, of appropriate restraint in one's life. And dad's fruit of the Holy Ghost, of chastity, being faithful to his calling, weathering the storms that are there. So today we honor the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and how appropriately the Father's Day falls on the Feast of the Holy Trinity. And fathers, as we salute you and congratulate you and thank you today, may you be reminded that your your very essence as father of the family comes straight from the essence of God. There is there was from all eternity a father and a son and a Holy Ghost, and there always will be. And God has chosen to share this this part of his essence, you might say, with the father of the family. He, and he, the father begets the son. The father, in, in the natural father, begets and nurtures and sustains and raises. What an awesome role that is, a leading to God. So let us pray for the fathers and pray for your spiritual fathers, the priests. There's so many analogies there in the spiritual realm with them baptizing and feeding their children at the, with, at the communion rail especially, but feeding them with exhortation and teaching and, and, and blessing and all the other things. So pray, pray for all priests and fathers of families today that they may understand more and more how they share in the fatherhood of God and that they be guided and strengthened in their, most, in their wonderful role. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.